7. Surveyors, engineers, and architects are never required to factor the supposed curvature of the earth into their projects. Canals, railways, bridges, and tunnels, for example, are always cut and laid horizontally, often over hundreds of miles without any allowance for curvature. 8. The Suez Canal, connecting the Mediterranean with the Red Sea, is a hundred miles long without any locks, making the water an uninterrupted continuation of the two seas. When constructed, the Earth's supposed curvature was not taken into account. It was dug along a horizontal datum line, 26 feet below sea level, passing through several lakes from one sea to the other, with the datum line and the water's surface running perfectly parallel over the hundred miles. 9. Engineer W. Winkler was published in the Earth Review regarding the Earth's supposed curvature, stating, As an engineer of many years standing, I saw that this absurd allowance is only permitted in school books. No engineer would dream of allowing anything of the kind. I have projected many miles of railways and many more of canals, and the allowance has not even been thought of, much less allowed for. This allowance for curvature means this that it is eight inches for the first mile of a canal and increasing at the ratio by the square of the distance in miles, thus a small navigable canal for boats, say, 30 miles long, will have, by the above rule, an allowance for curvature of 600 feet. Think of that, and then please credit engineers as not being quite such fools. Nothing of the sort is allowed. We no more think of allowing 600 feet for a line of 30 miles of railway or canal than of wasting our time trying to square the circle. 10. The London and Northwestern Railway forms a straight line 180 miles long between London and Liverpool. The railroad's highest point midway at Birmingham Station is only 240 feet above sea level. If the world were actually a globe, however, curving 8 inches per mile squared, the 180-mile stretch of rail would form an arc with the center point at Birmingham raised over a mile, a full 5,400 feet above London and Liverpool. 11. A surveyor and engineer of 30 years published in the Birmingham Weekly Mercury stated, I am thoroughly acquainted with the theory and practice of civil engineering. However bigoted some of our professors may be in the theory of surveying, according to the prescribed rules, yet it is well known amongst us that such theoretical measurements are incapable of any practical illustration. All our locomotives are designed to run on what may be regarded as true levels or flats. There are, of course, partial inclines or gradients here and there, but they are always accurately defined and must be carefully traversed. But anything approaching to 8 inches in the mile, increasing as the square of the distance, could not be worked by any engine that was ever yet constructed. Taking one station with another, all over England and Scotland, it may be stated that all the platforms are on the same relative level. The distance between eastern and western coasts of England may be set down as 300 miles. If the prescribed curvature was indeed as represented, the central stations at Rugby or Warwick ought to be close upon three miles higher than a cord drawn from the two extremities. If such was the case, there is not a driver or stoker within the kingdom that would be found to take charge of the train. We can only laugh at those of your readers who seriously give us credit for such venturesome exploits as running trains round spherical curves. Horizontal curves on levels are dangerous enough. Vertical curves would be a thousand times worse, and with our rolling stock constructed as at present, physically impossible. 12. The Manchester Ship Canal Company, published in the Earth Review, stated, It is customary in railway and canal constructions for all levels to be referred to a datum which is nominally horizontal and is so shown on all sections. It is not the practice in laying out public works to make allowances for the curvature of the earth. 13. In a 19th century French experiment by M. M. Bio and Arago, a powerful lamp with good reflectors was placed on the summit of Desierto del Palmas in Spain, and able to be seen all the way from Capri on the island of Ibiza. Since the elevation of the two points were identical, and the distance between covered nearly a hundred miles, if the earth were a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, the light should have been more than 6,600 feet a mile and a quarter below the line of sight. 14. 
The Lieutenant Colonel Cordlock experiment used oxyhydrogen Drummond's lights and heliostats to reflect the sun's rays across stations set up across 108 miles of St. George's Channel. If the Earth were actually a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, Portlock's light should have remained hidden under a mile and a half of curvature.